We give praise, honor, and glory to God the Father, Yahshua Adonai, the giver of life and the creator. We also give praise and honor and worship unto his beloved Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now we invite those to join us on our Thursday nights, our Bible sermons at 7 p.m. at 1323 Summit Street, Elgin, Illinois. If you'd like to join us, you are very welcome. Now, last week, my father spoke on good or strange incense and the importance of having a pure scent before the Lord and a light shining for all men to see to give glory unto the Father. The Bible states in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20, Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, for ye for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. This week, my father will continue the lesson of good or strange incense to further tell the importance of living pure, to keep our scent pure before God, not to grieve the Holy Spirit, and to shine a light for all of those to see the glory of God and the glory of Christ. Continue with us into the word.
power of deliverance. What the world needs now is deliverance. What the world needs now is to realize who the Son of God is. He is the perfected glory of the Father. Glory to his name. And just as the Lord sends his spirit on the earth for healing and healing and healing and healing of the broken, their soul, many broken, their soul, many broken. There's so many in darkness. And when you glorify the Lord, the light of his love begins to overshadow the pains the devil comes and he gives a glory. He gives a emulation, but it's a glory of evil. And in this glory of evil, people begin to receive a deceptive, 
It is a type of love, but it's not the love of the Lord. The love of the Lord is everlasting. The temporal love of the world is lust. And it cripples the light of life. One more time, my dear Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. Bless your name, Jesus. We bless your holy name. The world needs healing. The world needs healing. Just so much pain. And that power is in Christ Jesus. Oh, we bless your name, Jesus. Last week, we talked about the fruit. These are two weeks ago. We talked about the fruit of the earth. Then we began to talk about the light of life and that Christ is that light of life. And there is just so much darkness in the earth People have begun to worship the wrong thing. And they have developed a lust for the world. And that lust of the world does not bring the healing components for the spirit, soul, and body. David, understanding the spirit of God, says, My soul, my spirit, and my flesh cries for you, O Lord. David understood that being in the presence of the Lord, even being under the old covenant, he knew that being in the presence of the Almighty would bring him healing. You can come down a little bit. So we're going to continue talking about the light. The light of the Lord. The light. What is the light? A lot of people are in darkness. A lot of people are in pain. And the Lord is ever sending his spirit to bring healing. We were not created to be alone. We were not to be uh, 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 set aside away from one another. God created us as light beings. He created us to be amongst each other. He created us to ignite each other. He created us to be in him. In him we move and have our being. He is the light. Let's turn our Bibles, and again, if you want to, uh, Grace, you can sit with all your friends. If you want to put the, it on the, the sequence. Oh, my God. What is light? What is life? God is life. Might be too much reverb on this. So the Lord says in the beginning, we all know this, Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. 
And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be. Again, listen to the words. God says, let there be. What is the be? What are we? We are beings. What is beings? Beings is a projective of life. It is a projection of life and existence. And how did it come into place? Because God says, let there be. So when God says, let there be, God is manifesting the revelation of his thoughts. What is his thoughts? Inside of God was every living being. Inside of God was extracted love from his being. So he says, let there be. When God speaks, there is life. When enemy speaks, there is death. And studying a little bit of science, you realize that all light really is, is a continuation of a periodic wave. That's all light is. It is the continuation of a spoken word. God says, let there be light. There are seven colors in the spectrum. And they are measured by waves. So the devil comes and he says, you shall not surely die. He spoke a shadow in the midst of light. Adam and Eve were walking in the garden. They had the light of glory upon them. Again, we're still talking about light. They had the light of glory upon them. They could not see each other's nakedness because God says, let there be. So in the projection of let there be, there is a continuation of light. So when something says nay, it obscures the yay. Let there be is a yay. It is a moving forward. It is a projection in your life. There are people who say nay. You cannot do thus and thus. Or the Bible says he created us, informed us, and he made us beautiful. Then you have those who will say you are ugly. You are not wanted. I do not love you. These are obscured of light. It casts a shadow upon that thing which God has spoken. God says, let there be. God says, I am love. The world says, you are not loved. You are not beautiful. And what do we do with these words? The same projection, the same periodic spoken word that has the exact same detail of a wave. The same is a shadow to obscure the spoken word. And that spoken word that says life, it can be obscured by that thing that says death. They say when your words are spoken, the waves of your word continues. There was a force behind your words, and your words are everlasting. The Bible says that death and life is in the power of the tongue. So when you speak, your words are forever waving, and it only slows down after it hits upon particles. So be careful what you say. Be careful what people tell you. Be careful what people say to you. God says you are one who I love. Then there is one who says you are one who I hate. Your literal mind will take the vibration of those words and will put it in your mind. And those words of hate, it will be stagnant in your mind. And every time you replay those words, you are living out the words of hate instead of the words of love. The Bible shows that Jesus was the Son of God and was there before anything was made that was made. He was the original light. He was that light that God sent unto 
the earth. But what is happening now on the earth? When you hear about Christ, many are afraid to say the name of Jesus Christ. Why? Because the Bible says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. What is the word? It is the vibration of God's spoken word. So now, what do we have in place? We have the vibration of spoken words of evil. Many do not believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he is that healer. He is the one who has come to deliver. He is the one who gave his life. He is the one who speaks love and joy and peace. The Bible says he is the Prince of Peace. He is that Prince. So and again, the Bible says in the beginning, God says, let there be. His words, let there be, is still moving in the earth. Let there be. And you are that being. Go to John chapter 18. Jesus is the light of his father. John 1, 18, scripture says, no man has seen God at any time. The only begotten son, which is in the bosom of the father, he hath declared him. What does it mean to be in the bosom of someone? To be in the bosom of someone, you are close to someone. The Bible is telling you in this verse, he says, no man has seen God because God is a righteous God. He is a consuming fire. But look at what it says. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten son, which is in the bosom of the father, he hath declared him. So the son of God has seen the faith of God. He is the direct expression of the Father. And what is the Father? The Father is love. And he says, let's go back to Genesis. Who is the image of the invisible God? The firstborn of all creation. Genesis 1, 26. It says, and God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion. But look at what he says. Let us. Who would God possibly be talking to? Many scholars like to add that perhaps God was talking to angels. Talking to angels saying, let us. There is nothing that an angel has made with God. So this depiction in scripture, that is the son of God, and that is the spirit of God, and that is the father. God does not equate himself to an angel. He only equates himself to like beings. And the only ones who are like beings with him in him is the son and the spirit. So he says, let us make man. And who is Christ. You all are going to go through your scriptures today. Philippians. We're going to go to verse 2, chapter 2. And we're going to look at verse 4. Bible says, look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Before I go further, this is the body of Christ. Look not upon your own things in life, but how can you be a light to others? How can you be a light to those who have obscured shadows in their mind? 
Again, let me remind you that words are a spoken vibration, a periodic scale, a wavelength. It has a detailed frequency from the one who spoke. If God speaks well of you, he speaks well of your creation, and then there is one who speaks negative of you, they are a shadow of that light. And that shadow will cast a darkness on the good that God has spoken. But that shadow is only a mirage. What is a mirage? Something that is not reality. It has the persona of reality. It can make itself objective to reality, but a mirage is false. It is not real. So when you say in your heart, I want to go and do the work of the Lord. I want to bring people to the house of God. I want to save those that are broken. And then there are those who say, you are not able. You do not have what it takes. I want to invent something to better the lives of these individuals. That is the light of Christ. Any good thing that you can do for the Lord is a light of Christ. It brings life unto men. And then there is the obscurity to block the light. And the same vibration of the words that are spoken, if you take that into your mind, if you receive words that are spoken, derogatory, defeating, you will literally place that in your soul and on your blood vessels. The electromagnetic force, and I'm sorry, saints, we just got to talk about science because that's what it is. The very waves in your mind of doubt will sit in your mind. And when you play these words back in your mind, you're playing them from the identity of the person who spoke them. So who speaks into your life? Who do you allow to speak into your life? All things that God speak is wonderful. Everything that the Lord says about you is something beautiful. God knows the very count on your head. But yet people are living in darkness. People are living without love. People are living without expression of their very creation and what they are and what God brought them to earth to do. God is light. Light is production. You cannot have a plant. You cannot even eat without light because the light shadows, on, or I'm sorry, the light reflects on the ground. The ground picks it up. The, the cattle comes and eat the ground and then digest the food. You eat the cattle or the chicken or the vegetables need the light. This is a natural thing. How be it then do we perceive that we do not need the spiritual light? Let's move on. Let this mind, listen to what the Lord is saying. This is Apostle Paul speaking to the Philippians. Verse 5 of chapter 2, he says, Let this mind be in you. What mind? What he said prior. Look not on everything that is a part of your life, but which is a part of other people's lives. And what is he saying? Let that be your mindset to what do for others. Let the mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Number six, what? Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Seven, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Look at the humility of the Lord. Most of people, who speak life are people of humility. Most people who have a, a meek spirit, those are people who have life. And, and they, they, they understand life by the simple things. They, they appreciate just the smile on someone's fake, face or just the little intricate things that people do that remind them of life. Humility will bring this. And this is what Jesus was. Jesus did not make no rep reputation of himself. He only amplified his father. And what was that? 
he was the light of love. What did Jesus do when they smote him? He turned his face. What did Christ do when they spit upon him? He did not boast about who he was. He did not say, I come from a throne of power. And Christ Jesus, before being given the name Jesus, he was called the Son of God. Howbeit, do you really think that God had angels in heaven and he did not have a son? So God had Michael as a defense in the heavens defending the glory of God, but he did not have a son? God had Gabriel as a messenger to give messages to men on earth, but God didn't have a son? How be it we think these things? Then think again, Lucifer. The Bible talks about Lucifer and Isaiah and, and Ezekiel. How could God have all these angels that do so much for him, but he doesn't have a son? The Son of God has always been with a father. And we're getting ready to get to it. Look at verse 8 of Philippians. And being found in fashion as a man, what did I tell you earlier? He humbled himself and became obedient even unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow. Now look at this. Jesus was humble. Jesus did not make a name for himself. He was the light of all men, as it says in the book of John. He was the light to all men, but he did not make any reputation of himself. And then what happened? He was exalted because of his obedience. Oh, my Lord. As we look and we look upon the thrones, the Bible tells us in the book of Revelation, let's just go to that really fast. Revelation, I believe it's chapter 4. There are thrones and dominions in the heavens. How be it Christ Jesus became one who gained a seat? Revelation chapter 4 and verse 3. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sapphire stone. This is the Father. And there was a rainbow round about the throne and sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty elders, it says, but twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders. God shared his throne with elders. Who were these elders? An elder cannot be an angel because angels cannot testify of the gospel. And what is that gospel? You being redeemed. These were the lights of the earth whom the Lord saw fit to put them in the throne of God. So men say, how could Christ Jesus be the son of God and be living before God? There is only one throne. There is only one throne, but there are many seats. And Christ became the one who sitteth at the right hand of the Father. But why? Because he humbled himself. So now let's go to Daniel chapter 12. Are you a light unto the world? Are you a light to people who come in contact with you? Are you a light to those who are walking in darkness? And if you are that light, whose light do you emulate? Do you have a light of humility? Do you have a light that the Lord will say, I will give you a seat? I will give you a seat in the midst of the world so that the world will look upon you and see me. Are you one who speaks life or are you one who speaks death. 
Daniel chapter 12. Listen to this. And at that time shall Michael, who was Michael, stand up the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. He is a defense of God. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as was never since there was a nation. Even to that time, same time, and at that time, thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. Two, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some shame and everlasting contempt. Three, that they be wise shall rise or shine as the brightness of the firmament. Look at verse three again. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. What is your light of life? Do you cast a shadow on the word of God or are you the brightness of the sun of God and what are the types of brightness humility patience temperance long-suffering brotherly kindness these are the casting of the periodical wave that goes out before people when you speak what do they feel from your light when you embrace, what do people feel from your light? When you speak, what do people feel from your light? Leviticus chapter 9. The Lord was showing Israel... In the time that he made the tabernacle, God was showing Israel that you must be clean before me. Because the world will give you things that is not of his spirit. Leviticus chapter 9, verse 24. Let's go to 23. Moses and Aaron went into the tabernacle of the congregation and came out and blessed the people. And look at what it says, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the people. Why did God make the tabernacle? The tabernacle was a place of cleansing. The tabernacle was a place for you to come close to your father. It was a place for you to let go of all the shadows and darkness of the earth. In that time, Israel was unclean. And look at what God did. Verse 24, he says, and there came a fire out from before the Lord and consumed upon the altar a burnt offering of fat, which all the people saw, and they shouted and fell on their face. So what I want you to see in this is, God lit the fire. God shone light upon the fire so that when they saw the fire, they knew it was to cleanse them. And the Lord says, let this fire ever burn. So the question is, are you a living light? Are you a burning furnace before the Lord? Is your light ever before the Lord? Are you walking in humility? Are you walking in grace? When you speak life to others, does it uplift them? Does it encourage them? Does it bring them out of darkness? And you yourselves, how do you get out of the darkness that the earth may bring upon you? Dwelling in the spirit of Christ, which is the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter seven, we are almost complete.
Acts chapter 7, verse 38. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in Mount Sinai. Look at what God is saying about Israel in the time of the Old Testament. In the book of Acts, he's telling you, this is he that was in the church, in the wilderness, with the angel which spake to him in Mount Sinai, and with our fathers, fathers who received the lively oracles given unto us. So what is the meaning of the church? What is the definition of the church? You are a lively oracle. You are a lively deliverance. The idea of being in the midst of a wilderness, in the midst of darkness, to be a light is to be the church. To be an embrace is to be the church. So even God used Israel as a church even then, they are speaking about this in the New Covenant. But they are revealing to you that Israel was a church from the beginning. John chapter 6. What manner of light are you? When men hear your words, do they see the Father? John chapter 6. We're going to go to verse 35. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. It's 36. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. 37. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. Who is the light of the world? The Bible shows you, I showed you earlier, he was in the bosom of the Father. He declared the face of the Father. Who can declare you? Who's your best friend? Who knows you? What is it about a best friend who's in your bosom? They know everything about you. They know your likes. They know your dislikes. They know what makes you angry. They know what fears you have. They know everything about you. This is what one is being in your bosom. And the scripture is telling you that Christ was literally in the bosom of the Father. When the Father spoke on earth, it was Christ who declared his words. It was Christ who amplified his words. So my question to you again today, what manner of light are you? And are you one that need light? Do you need someone to shine in your life? Do you need someone to speak good? How great and fitly spoken is a word in the time needed. Words have power. If you need people to talk to you and give you encouragement, go to those who shows you the amplifying of Christ. Humility. Love. Joy. There's joy. I mean, in our home, we have joy. Our words of joy are vibrating and bouncing off the doors in the house and the walls. What is in your home? Who's in your home? And what do they speak? Do they speak life? The Bible says that laughter is a medicine. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And in these things, this is the light of the world. This is what the world needs. They need love. They need embrace. They need encouragement. My last scripture, Colossians.
It is time for the church to become what God originally intended it to be. There are festivals that God developed for the tabernacle and they were surrounded by the tabernacle. Not only did God bring the tabernacle as a cleansing, he says, let this flame ever so burn. That is your light. You are to be a light to those who need love, those who need encouragement, those who need to be slapped out of their way. Don't literally slap them now. Love or the light of things you see deeper than what they see. Images in our mind bringing us low. You literally begin to become the adaptation of the words that are spoken. When someone speaks death into your ears and you place that in your mind, you are literally putting the waves of those thoughts in your mind. And you begin to replay those words in your mind. And you give life to those words that bring you to a place of darkness. God is light. There should be no anguish in light. There should be no pain in light. That's why the Bible says, I will wipe away your tears. There will be none of this in heaven. But as you are in the earth, as it is hard to find those who have the heart of love, just begin to worship him. Just saying, Jesus, I love you. You're sending up to the Lord light. And then the Lord will say to you, I love you. Even if you cannot see him, it is the word spoken of truth that brings light to your light. Colossians 1. Listen to this. Let's go to 12, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints of what? In light, not darkness. In the beginning, God says, let there be light. He spoke the thoughts of his mind. Let there be life. And he says, it is meet to me to have you in my light. 13, who had delivered us from the power of what? Darkness. What is darkness? The opposite of light. What is a shadow? The obscuring of light. What is a shadow? It is when God speaks life and a shadow gets in the way of the life and it obscures and gives you a mirage of darkness. The mirage of darkness can intimidate you not to see whom the Lord really loves. And you begin to reflect on the things spoken. Again, 13, who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son and whom we have redemption that which was lost, now Christ has redeemed you. And he says, come back unto the Father. Come, you are seated in high places now with Christ. Look at what he says. In whom have redemption through his blood. Even the forgiveness of sins. 15, who is the invisible, or I'm sorry, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him, verse 16, were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth, visible and invisible. Rather, there be thrones or dominions or principalities, all powers, all things were created by him. Who? Look at the power that Christ has. Look at the power that he has. And all the power that he has. He gained authority. He gained power. Being exalted through humility. That was another portion of his light. 
I hope this has blessed you. We love you in the name of Christ Jesus. And we have wished you a great week and we hope to see you again soon. God bless. Once again, we thank you for joining us in this sermon and this lesson as we continue to see the importance of the light of Christ and understanding how there are two that basically are in the earth at the moment with man. The, the kingdom of darkness is always out to still kill and destroy, but the light of Christ is there to bring you through it, to get you closer to the Father and closer to the chance of eternal life where the kingdom of darkness is not. We thank you for joining us and if you would like to be saved, pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord, I come before you today humbly and I ask that you would forgive me of my sins. I repent of my ways. I accept you as the King of all and the creator of heaven and earth. And I accept your son as the King and as the savior. I ask that you accept me into the kingdom and to bring others into the kingdom as well. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you for joining us and we hope to see you next Thursday at 7 p.m. If you would like to provide for the church, the ways to give will be below. And um, God bless, we love you in the name of Christ and have a good week.